Welcome to the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage, where rude mechanicals do magic. Hello, I'm Bronze Age, Director of the Secret Underground Laboratory Recovery and Salvage. And today our project is to turn this hanging pot rack into a hanging light fixture for our customer's kitchen. One of the hooks is missing, and I've got a piece made for it already, which is going to require some creative clamping. treatment on this uh, chandelier is going to be a candelabra socket, short piece of pipe nipple, and it's going to be welded onto here. Now, all the hooks on these, each one is a little unique in its own way. None of them are the same shape. So what I'm going to do in order to weld this and get all of the candles at the same level, I'm going to uh, Clamp it using these hose pin, hose pins like this. Get it nice and straight, and then use a block like this to as a gauge, so that I'll be referencing off this band and not off the end of the uh, hook. small wells like these it's very easy to get one that looks good but the weld material just lays down on one piece of the metal and only penetrates one of them so you have to go back and give it a really good test to make sure that it's not just going to snap off the first time you put some stress on it Now we reach the point where the artistic and the engineering have to meet. This net on the bottom of the nipple is welded in place. And we're going to have to have a check ring, this little brass plate piece here. Its purpose is to hold the uh, candle cover in place since there is no bobiche or candle cup on this. Also, in a regular chandelier, the wires would go down through the pipe and into the arm. We're not going to have that option, so in order to create a clearance for the wire, I've drilled a hole here in this candle cup, and it goes down on the bottom. One of the hard-learned lessons in chandelier work is that there's a limit to how tight you can tighten anything, a nut or a bolt or a screw, and then it starts to get loose again because stuff starts to bend. And so, to eliminate that problem of things coming loose because they were too tight, 
I like to use the blue thread lock. This way I can just make it moderately tight, nice and snug, and I don't have to worry about it coming loose. Put a little more up here on the top. And now we're ready for the wiring to start. Now the black wiring on black chain and black metal may not show up very well on uh, camera, but we've got a trunk wire coming down each chain because since this is going to be a light fixture, not a pot rack anymore, we can hang it from a single point and get it set so that uh, it'll sit still and you don't have to worry about it wiggling around when you hang pots on it. But the trunk wire comes down and at this point we have a choice we can either make splices which would be on the inside of the band here or we could do what they call buddy wiring which is where the trunk wire comes down goes to each of the two terminal screws and then a second wire comes off of it and runs up and over to the next socket and it is also buddy wired to the third wire we do the same thing on the other side. And what this does, it gives us a minimal amount of wiring, uh, something very neat. Uh, you can barely tell it just by looking at it. And you don't have uh, big lumpy uh, splices on the inside. This is Bronze Age, director of the Secret Underground Laboratory, and I thank you for watching this video about uh, making a pot rack into a chandelier. And uh, we really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Tell all your friends, tell all your neighbors, and uh, we will see you again in the next video. Thank you very much.